Spiritual balance takes real self-examination, real relationship in Messiah Jesus, and obedience in studying the Word. Today I will share how Christians can start off in a good place, but get derailed into deception on this episode of Hearing God. Tell me. I hear you. Is it you? Hi, Freedom One, HearingGod.tv. Did you know that the enemy loves zealots? You can be so entrenched in Christendom, and yet the enemy is right there to try and scoop you up. In this message, I share ways that very zealous Christians get derailed, whether it's flesh of a wrong heart, lazy flesh, proud flesh, greedy flesh, you name it. Repeat after me, what gets us derailed? Flesh? Thank you. Touchy-feely. This is a category where I'll be giving examples of people pursuing things that tantalize the senses, more so than a relationship in his truth. Uh, back when I was in a cult, uh, we had a request from one of the members for prayer over her property as she seemed to have lots of witchcraft attacks. So after we finished, one of the members walked across the driveway and went into a hysterical laughter. They said, oh, oh, it's, it's a Holy Ghost hot spot. Come and stand in it. And so other members, they'd all begin to walk through that spot or stand in it and eventually begin to behave the same way. I, have wa I had walked through that spot earlier and felt nothing. Of course, I became the odd man out, but I refused to manufacture something that was not there. Now, how do I know that this was kind of fishy anyhow? It's because the member that started this whole hot spot thing, the Lord had been telling me for months that they were a false prophet. This, in fact, has been the only person God has ever told me was a false prophet. I simply feel like he wanted me to see what the attributes of one were. So, you know, this knowledge at first I tried to push off as the enemy trying to poison me. I certainly didn't want to be in, a, in any offense or unforgiveness, but the Lord would continue to put scriptures in front of me and the person would keep manifesting bad fruit versus myself and my family. Again, through his word, everything is revealed. I've got an example that fits into this touchy-feely category. It's an excerpt from the writings of Frank Hammond. And he goes on to say, Christians, especially those suffering from rejection, inferiority, and insecurity, are prone to crave an intimacy with the Lord, which can draw them into unscriptural ways of achieving such closeness. For example, a Christian woman who had an unloving husband was encouraged by a counselor to visualize Jesus as being her husband. She was to imagine Jesus coming through the door, hugging her and kissing her. Her visualized Jesus became very real to her, and she found this fantasy very satisfying. But one day, her visualized Jesus became so intimate that he made sexual advances toward her. She was frightened enough to seek counsel, which led her to deliverance from a familiar spirit, the spirit of another Jesus. The salad bar leads us astray. Pulling out isolated scriptures to make them fit instead of understanding the character of God throughout the scriptures. And a big example I can give you is street preachers that salad bar the judgment scriptures and condemnation to justify their, their hellfire as a broad net while ignoring that God is always speaking to the house of God through those scriptures, not to pagans that can't receive God because of the curse and veil upon them for rejecting God. Doesn't it make more sense that these hellfire preachers go instead into churches? Even Jesus only judges the religious of his day. 
but speaks parables. And without a parable, he did not speak. That break the veil. And then the pagans are convicted of their sin and receive the kingdom. I'll probably just put an article on my blog if you want to know more on my stand about this, because that's a whole separate issue. I have yet to ever been in the presence or uh, watched a video of Bible bashing, street preaching, net a positive confirmation on its behalf by the Holy Spirit. Uh, the end result of a recent sharing of my scripturally based position with someone that condones it was for them to turn around and mock Christians that love, love, love. Well, sorry, but there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus. And I will love the lost into the kingdom, and I will continue to do just as Jesus did in correcting the religious firmly. Wrongs don't make a right. God's word is faithful. It goes forth, not returning void, but it has access for anyone. But as believers, we know it's only the end choice that counts. And you wonder why people get deceived. They see results. When you continue to see results, despite things getting farther and farther watered down from the truth, you begin to justify goodness by the result and not the path to get there. A crooked road with results has an end result of no reward. I knew a prophet once that had gotten involved into an African money scheme in the past. It was said that it was an innocent mistake. Her heart was to benefit ministry. The problem was is that she did it a second time, again, foregoing the safety in a multitude of counselors secretly. So let's look at the fruit. It doesn't matter that she wanted to help ministry. Greed has many disguises and excuses. Again, using that platform of a trusting Christian, others lost thousands of dollars again. What does that do to the gospel? Ugh. If you innocently got caught in a mess once, why wouldn't you seek the counsel of other godly people? Wallowing in the mud. Character in being a Christian is so important. And one way people lose balance is by chopping down the tree and then erecting it again. What I mean about this is aligning with spirits that demean our high standing and then expect people to be impressed with Jesus after you've spoken things that oppose the truth in the word. Now in the scriptures we hear, we are fools for Christ's sake. But what I'm talking about jumps from that scripture into a negative confession over one's life. It's one thing to say, look who God can use, but it's another to begin to confess negative, negative, chop, chop, chop down that tree. Remember in Proverbs 23, 7, for as he thinks within himself, so he is. It's funny because most people do this to humor people. Let's say you're a lawyer or a politician. So you cut yourself down with jokey, idle words because that's what society accepts. Everybody makes fun of them. Well, no, he may use broken vessels. But as we are conforming into his image, we can testify what he's done without wallowing in the mud, spending too much time nosing around with what the devil is doing. This is a big one, folks. When I was in a cult, the leader would push that we needed to educate ourselves about what the enemy was up to by poking our nose into their culture. The cult leader actually had all of us watch the movie called The Craft. And then in watching the miniseries spinoff that birthed from that called Charmed. Church, we are to be about our father's business. 
after I left the cult and dug into God alone, I found that if he wanted to educate me, he would bring stuff to my attention without my having to dip my toe into any cesspool. Do you know how many people are out there that have been into the occult, that have been redeemed and are able to educate us with what we need to know? It is true, what was meant for bad will always be turned around for his glory. If you've been redeemed from a shady past, guess what, the Lord has a ministry for you. We need to spend the bulk of our time examining ourselves, being pure, and growing in the Lord. Trust me, there are no hidden secrets that we will find apart from the shadow of His wing. Off the path for lack of the word. I got another example from the writings of Frank Hammond. The church there had been organized by an anointed woman pastor who had been deceased for several years. One night, the Lord revealed to Ida May, by means of a spiritual dream, that several in the church were being visited by an apparition of the former pastor. In the dream, Ida May was shown the apparition. It appeared very beautiful. When Ida May identified it as an apparition, the face became hideously demonic. The present pastor of the church, a young man, confirmed that everything Ida May was shown was true. Several older women in the fellowship were resisting the new young leader and wanted everything to continue as it was before. These women, who had been closely related to their former pastor, so desired to stay in communication with her that they opened themselves up to being visited by the deceptive apparition. The sad part of the story is that the deceived women refused to believe that they were communicating with a familiar spirit rather than their deceased pastor. Satan is a sly deceiver. When forbidden things are sought or when good things are sought in wrong ways, the devil is quick to take advantage. What's another big apparition we hear of? Marian apparitions. What do we know of Mary, the mother of Jesus? She was chosen of God. She was obedient. She was eternally blessed. The scripture does not say Mary was without sin. She ascended to heaven without dying, remained virgin, or is a mediator. Those things the Catholic Church added. These additions give Marian apparitions credence. But next to the word of God, these apparitions speak of necromancy. The, which the definition is the supposed practice of communicating with the dead, especially in order to predict the future. Well, what happens at these apparitions? People flock to get some new revelation or direction through Mary or Jesus. But the message is good, people say. Doesn't matter, does it? We are all too aware that the enemy knows the scripture too. If the enemy has gotten us into necromancy, we lose. The scriptures say that God reveals his secrets to the prophets. No mention of any other mediator to his sharing than Jesus Christ. I don't bring up the Marian apparition example so that you Bible bashers out there can rail on Catholics. Remember, if Michael the Archangel wouldn't even judge Satan, then how much more so we shouldn't be railing each other. Strange signs. What happens when you assume? Never assume any phenomena is God reaching out to you. We need to be satisfied by his word alone. And through his word, we shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free! <laughs> I was in a big spiritual battle a few months ago and I had a very strange phenomena happen. I awoke abruptly one night to see a swirling two and a half to three foot portal, best way I can describe it, at the end of my bed. It didn't look good, it didn't look bad, but I hollered the word of God at it and professed Jesus as my authority, etc until I ran out of things to say 
and just ended up just, what is this? Finally, you know, it disappeared. This, of course, all occurring in a minute to a minute and a half span of time, you know, and I'm hollering and my husband sleeps through the whole ordeal. I had a friend uh, try to research if any others have had this sort of thing happen to them before, but for comparison's sake, I concluded it was bad based on the fact that nothing happened in the face of the professed word. You know, if God's going to show up and I'm speaking the word and nothing happens, the Lord would confirm and say yes. There was none of that. And, and secondly, the fact that I had already mentioned having been in the midst of a big spiritual battle. And that's what the enemy likes to do, folks. When you are in a battle and pressing in, we just cannot allow to let our guard down for a desired flash in the pan. We examine fruit and we use the word. Am I repeating myself throughout this message? I mean, how many ministries have we witnessed that get derailed by this one? Do I want to see the glory? Doesn't everyone? Praise God, we have that to look forward to in all of eternity. But we have to go through the narrow gate. We will see God by believing, by being holy, and by being pure. Awaken your discernment. If you have an uneasiness about anything, you should be watching the fruit and reading the word. You should be questioning everything. You don't want to miss the Holy Spirit straightening out any crooked parts in your path. And you don't want to allow the enemy's voice to meld in your spirit. So you become like that frog cooking gradually in the boiling pot of water. If something doesn't set well in your spirit, seek to know why. Find out everything by holding God's hand in relationship and by the truth in the word not by following a crowd of people into the glittery ditch. 